Hello everyone, welcome to Scalers YouTube channel. This is Sai Prakash and in this video, we are going to see and learn everything that you need to understand about uh, AWS Service Identity and Access Management. In short, AWS IAM. Let's understand uh, today's topic and what are we going to cover in this uh, lecture, right? So as the topic says, so we are going to understand what AWS IAM is and in order to do that, we'll understand uh, what our identities, what exactly uh, responsibilities of IAM are, what are policies, what are the groups, how uh, the access is managed centrally, and what are the best practices while you're using uh, IAM with AWS. Right? So these are the topics that we're going to cover. So without wasting any time, let's get into our uh, discussion. So what exactly is an IAM? A, a full form no, it says that identity and access management, right? So is that a simple random name that they took from the dictionary or does it mean something, right? So I believe if you wanted to learn something, you need to ask questions, right? So the first question that we are going to ask is, what does it do, right? So that's a good place to start to understand anything, right? So it does two things, right? So it does authentication and authorization. It doesn't say that, no, we are going to do that explicitly, but behind the scenes, these are the two broad things that it does, right? If you want me to you know, explain about authentication, it's a pretty basic uh, thing. But in the context of AWS IAM, right? So when I say authentication, so we have identities, right? So identities are basically, for example, you're logging into your AWS console, right? So you'll be creating a username for yourself, right? That would be an identity. And in the similar way, there are multiple identities uh, that are uh, that can be used in AWS, right? So in order to access something. So authentication is basically you know, taking your identity and verifying its authenticity. If I have to uh, give an example, uh, Basically, the ID card is used to enter into a campus building and all things like verifying the password and all these comes under authentication and under authorization. Uh, basically, once you figured out the uh, uh, identity is authenticated, but is he authorized to view the service? It's that's the question, right? So. This is where authorization comes, uh, comes into picture. And these two are pretty, pretty basic uh, terms in general context. But uh, since we are trying to understand what IAM is, we need to you know, nail this down, right? So we need to make sure that we are understanding it perfectly because small things add up and they get complicated, right? So if you are not 100% sure about the small things, uh, then you need to take care of that. So basically authentication takes my identity, verifies it, authorization, uh, it checks whether it can access or not. Is it authorized to view or not, right? So again, these are two things, authentication and authorization. What is IAM again? If I have to define it in a sentence, AWS IAM, it's a web service that helps you know, securely uh, control access to AWS resources, right? So you basically use IAM, as we discussed previously, to authenticate and authorize users to use resources. So if I have to take a definition from AWS website, so AWS is used to centrally manage and control security permissions for any identity requiring access to your AWS account. Right? So if I have to give an example, right? So if you're uh, familiar with AWS services in any context or any uh, scale, uh, having the ability to access a particular S3 bucket to access some personal files or uh, companies' uh, uh, secret PDFs, etc. So this is where you, know, you have to be, uh, be I am user to that account and you should also have view permission on that bucket, right? So this is where I am comes in. How is it done? This is achieved by the help of uh, multiple features that I am has, right? So if I have to name them users, groups, roles, policies, and many more, right? So these are few uh, different features that we use in IAM you know, to be able to do the identity and access. Right. So again, I'm uh, pressing on the word identity because identity is anything that is used to get into a resource, right? So identities can be users, groups, roles, etc. Right. We'll look at into get more uh, into uh, what exactly identities are later part of the video. So let's understand a couple of a few interesting facts about AWS, right? So again, aware about AWS, right? So AWS has uh, many services in AWS are uh, 
not global in nature because they are tied to some uh, zone right but uh, aws iam it's a one of the fewer global services right so when i say that so it doesn't matter if you create your iam user in any region right so it could be frankfurt mumbai uh, us any us 1a 1b etc so it's a global service that means you can only create one user and that would be enough for all the regions and where do you find iam it, it, it is found on the security and compliance service list most probably the aws iam would be the first service that you use uh, when you are uh, trying to access some of aws services you're trying to leverage aws services right so ideally iam should be your first service that you use right so even your account setup and all right so and also one practice that aws advises is that never use your root account right so this is where iam comes in so when you you create a new account use your root account to create an uh, initial user give him all the uh, admin permissions and never use your uh, root access keep root safely in a shelf and use the initial user that you created and that user can create groups rules etc so now let's understand uh, what exactly are iam users right so i've been using this term multiple times i am user right so remember the identity aspect that we are talking about that is what iam user is so if i ask the question right who is that user right that often refers back to iam user instead of uh, basically sharing the root credentials with everyone we create iam users for individual uh, users in our account and uh, such that uh, everybody in the organization can use uh, aws right so this thing i need to focus on right so aws account is uh, generally uh, uh, expected to be used by a organization right so it is at least i feel right so i feel it in that way right aws is not user first it is always organization first your organization uses aws or your company uses aws your uh, college uses aws account something like that so it, but yeah each individual users can use it uh, it's not a big deal the initial philosophy i believe was an organization can have an aws account and all the users can use it right so it, it is pretty uh impractical for the for each user to have a new account right so generally create a, a root account and we let everybody access it so that's how organization aspect comes into uh, the picture basically we never share the root credentials with everyone or anyone and we create individual users for them that is what uh, iam user is so as i said iam users are not separate account they are basically users in your account right so you have account and these users are identities right and each user will have its own password uh, depending upon how you create it right so uh, each iam user can have either programmatic access or uh, console access so when i say console access he can uh, log into console or if you are giving him programmatic access so he can use that access keys and all uh, uh, to be able to hit some api through code or aws cli etc right so this is about iam users and things you need to take away are uh, you can create Uh, my, any uh, multiple users under the same account they are not different users and you can create a uh, login url for each of them and you have to make sure uh, the passwords are given uh, such that you know, the users create a strong passwords and all you can create a individual access keys so that if, if somebody wants to need a programmatic access uh, to that so he can have uh, instead of giving him a console access you can only give him a, a programmatic access so let's understand it with a simple example so you have your account uh, this is going to be your your parent account and you can add multiple identities so in our case that would be users and if this is a official uh, description i took from aws uh, website and if you look, look at it right so there these are users dev users and these are some real people but if you look at last two identities there are test app and test app 1 and 2 right so that should give you idea that uh, users are not always a, a real user it could be a app that would be using that i am user how do i create this users right so this can be created in a multiple ways the most basic one is uh, by getting into aws console or using aws cli or uh, directly using i am api right and as i previously discussed we can have two access programmatic and console accesses now that we understood the theory part of it let's get into a demonstration so now let's look at uh, the demonstration for the iam users right so 
I'm I logged into my console. Uh, this is my AWS console. I logged in through my uh, IAM user. If I want to access uh, IAM, right? So current generally you will find it under. Uh, you can search for services. Uh, if you look into it, it 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 will be generally under security and compliance, and this would be IAM. We can basically search for it, uh, but just to get an idea, this is where it is. And you can see that basically AWS you know, prompts you, you know, to follow the security practices. I haven't added uh, multi-factor authentication for this uh, particular IAM user that I'm using. I'll add it uh, in, a, in a moment and make sure I'll all these are green, right? So now uh, if I want to create a new uh, user, uh, you can find under access management, there is a user and click on it and you can create a new user i already have a, a user called explorer which i generally use uh, i have created this using my root account now i'll create a new uh, demo user so i'll say add user it will be uh, redirecting me to the uh, user uh, journey screen and i want to create a new user called as uh, scalar demo uh, let me do this okay so the, this will be my new user and as we talked in the uh, introduction as well uh, we, we can provide two different types of access uh, to the user that we're creating right access uh, key and programmatic access or basically password through which you can sign in using the link right so this is used for programmatic access so if i am trying to call it from apis or anything and for now a uh, demonstration purposes i'll create with password Right. so it will automatically generate a password or also can give a custom password i'll do automatic generation let's do a custom password and i'll give it a uh, let's do automatic generation and uh, so there is this button which you can click keep it on so what happens is uh, it prompts the user you no know, next time he signs in he has to automatically change the password right so uh, the password reset is required so looks good and you can see that um, it is asking for us to set permissions uh, we will be learning about uh, these permissions as we move along in the lecture for now i uh, don't create any permissions and i'll give it as a key key is just basically for the identification and i'll give it as use case as a demo just for my identification purposes right so these are uh, this is my user so he's a user and you can see what are the permission that he have he generally only has a one permission that is a user uh, change we'll learn about user as we move along in the lecture right so let me create a user and that is how you create user right so this i've created this user scalar uh, demo and i can basically send email uh, to that person uh, you know whoever uh, is going to use this account or i can basically download uh, the csv file right so this will download the credentials that i can directly mail him uh, mail it to him so this is a short demo about i am user let's move along with the lecture and we'll see more about the different topics okay uh, so moving on from that uh, demo uh, let's understand what are IAM groups? It should sound pretty intuitive, right? So an IAM group is basically a group of, uh, you no know, collection of IAM users, right? So if I have three to four users doing the same task, I can group them into a single IAM group. But what, okay, I did a group, right? So what is the advantage that I'm getting, right? So basically if I uh, create a group and uh, specify uh, permissions for the multiple users, right? So instead of giving permission to each user, I can give permissions to the group itself group has the capability of attaching permissions to it and when i add a user uh, into that group each user will automatically assume all the uh, permissions the the user group is associated with right so which which makes it way easier to manage the permissions for the users right so let's uh, talk about a use case simple use case right so let's say you are the admin of your uh, company and uh, you, you know take care of uh, aws administration and permissions right so uh, you have your admins group who has all the admin permissions right and a new user joins to your group right so 
you instead of creating a single user and adding all the permissions to him you can basically uh, add uh, him uh, add the user that is associated with him into the group and the same way if somebody has to leave the organization into a, another group right so so let's say uh, he was previously in the admin group and now he is in the uh, let's say support group or on call group then you can you know remove him from your uh, group and add him to the group that is associated with that so it basically basically makes it very easy and makes much sense uh, to group, do it in, in this way right so that is what uh, i am groups are again uh, this is the example that we talked about uh, it it makes it easier for us uh, when we are dealing with the bigger organizations right take amazon scalar etc right i'm pretty sure uh, there are thousands of uh, devs you are using uh, who are using this uh, aws access and each of them need some level of uh, i am permission some level of uh, services that they need to use right so in that case uh, we can create groups for them and uh, add them into groups but one thing there are few things to take care of is uh, there is a limit in how many groups you can create by default again that can be extended uh, we'll talk about it and you can attach policies to the group that define what access is user in the group get in so what are policies policies are basically a uh, statements uh which as uh, which you no know, specify what permissions that the group gets in right so we'll discuss about policies uh, as we move along and this is a official uh, description from uh, aws website so they uh, specify this uh, scenario where we have uh, admins devs and qa group uh, testers and obviously each require a different set of accesses right so admin needs to access everything and devs need to have only dev access uh, to the resources and uh, test also requires some set of features and uh, test people maybe can only view some services and not uh, make changes to that things like that and it gets uh, much more deeper into that so that's how uh, we segregate uh, users identities into groups and let's talk about some uh, few of, uh, key uh, facts that i was speaking about earlier so by default there is a limitation of 100 groups in each aws account but uh, again almost all the limitations uh, can be increased uh, by directly contacting to aws right so many organizations have uh, corporate accounts and corporate linkups with them and they can uh, request for uh, uh, increase in limits and all on demand and also uh, each user can be added to at most 10 groups so make sure you know you're uh, uh, creating your groups in a optimized way such that you're not keep on adding them to multiple users so let's talk about our advantages right so as i said it's uh, less stress uh, adding and removing user uh, uh, to groups and it is very less prone to human error right this is a very important point right so every time uh, somebody is making some changes it is prone to error right so uh, if there is a human input it is prone to error right so in this way we are at least cutting that error right so we only need to create a group once and make sure we did it correctly and you basically add users as you go along so it makes it uh, less prone to human error right in such a way that you are not giving someone uh, a permission to delete the entire database by mistake right so that shouldn't happen so i am groups helps you uh, achieve that now uh, let's look into the uh, demo of uh, iam groups now we are going to see a demo on iam groups right so again it is pretty easy uh, as we seen in the previous demo i just logged into my console and i'm in my uh, iam service area and i can find groups uh, in the very beginning and i can create a new group uh, there is already a group present in my uh, uh, iam uh, which i have previously created now let me create a new group and i'll give it as a scalar demo group and so once i create a, a group right so i, I can uh, while creating the group itself i can initialize if i want to add any user to uh, this group right so as we see in the previous demo i have this uh, demo user demo user called scalar demo so i want to add this uh, scalar demo user into my scalar demo group right so i can do that here and 
are there any uh, permissions that i want to attach uh, to the uh, group itself so that can that can also be done uh, straight from here right so we, you will be learning about uh, policies as we move on in the lecture right so i want to uh, attach something like uh, ec2 full access right so i want this user uh, users in this group to have uh, full access uh, to ec2 uh, right so that's why i select this this is an aws managed policy you will learn about it in uh, as we move along so i'll create a group right so in this if i look into this group i have this user right so he is part of this group and uh, yeah, as you have previously observed in the previous demo so we did not attach any permissions uh, to him explicitly the only permission that he has is i am user change password that is because we wanted him to change password but you can see that uh, from the group that is uh, is associated with the uh, aws ec2 full access is attached to this person right so i basically created a blank user and by adding him into the group he will be uh, assuming all the roles and policies that group has right so that's it for this uh, demo of uh, aws user and let's continue along with our learning now let's talk about im roles so im roles again it sounds pretty similar to what an im user is but trust me it is uh, there is a a uh, small difference between them right so it is a basically an identity that you use uh, that you can create in your account and it also has specific for permissions similar to user while uh, the i am uh, role uh, sorry i am user is is uniquely identified to one person a role is not like that so role is intended to be assumed by anyone who needs it right so a person a needs a uh, to do some certain kind of a task so he can assume a role that is associated with that right so user uh, has some set of permissions and uh, that particular user will have that user uh, access and permissions but i am rule this is transferable right so uh, it's like a template and that can uh, anybody else can assume that role i am rule in order to access the resource that he is looking for and it does not have like credentials like uh, password and uh, the access keys or anything it just a role and it has some policies right so uh, each uh, no session that you create right or each uh, uh, api request that you create so in that case there is a temporary temporary uh, security credentials right so you don't even uh, see as a naked user uh, what happens behind the scenes but im role is basically you create a role have some policies and that can be assumed uh, whenever it is required and let's talk about use cases right so there has to be a good use case of why we use uh, im services right so let's let's look at this so you can use roles to ligate uh, access to users applications or services that don't normally have access to aws resources right so as i said previously uh, if i want a user uh, to have permission to let's say a specific bucket s3 read instead of creating a user for him i can uh, ask him to assume the role which has the access uh, to do that right so let's say you might need to grant users in your aws account to that usually don't have or grant users in one account access or or let's say you have an uh, mobile app that you're creating and it is using a database like uh, aws dynamo db right so in that case uh, you use uh, aws im roles such that uh, that particular app can use that role to make uh, queries to uh, your dynamo db right so that's the use cases right so again uh, sometimes you want to give access uh, to users who already have identities right and uh, they are outside your organization right so or uh, you might also want to give access to some third parties uh, that can that needs to perform audit on your service sources right so in that case uh, IAM, IAM roles are the go-to, uh, right? So, I mean, if you start using AWS, na, uh, you will see IAM roles being created left and right by default also, and you can also do the custom uh, creation also. There are few different types of uh, AWS IAM roles, and you need to understand uh, these uh, to know what we are talking about, right? So, uh, there are multiple types, like say uh, AWS Service IAM roles, right? So, these are used. Uh, not to be able to access certain uh, services right so let's say uh, if i want to uh, create a service role uh, which gives me access to 
EC2 instances, right? So that 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 would be a AWS service IAM role, right? So this IAM role is giving me access to a certain services, right? And in the same way, uh, we have service linked IAM role, and it is little different from what uh, service IAM is. Uh, uh, to state some facts, right? So service linked roles are uh, predefined, and you cannot you can't change them, right? So they are maintained by AWS, right? So these are service linked roles, again. Uh, but certain services like uh, Amazon Lex, these kind of services have some service linked roles, and we'll get into uh, all this once we in the in the videos or in the playlist that we are trying to build, and we also create roles for cross account access. Uh, this is an important one, and I, I believe we need to talk about it. So cross account access is sometimes uh, uh, you need to provide access to uh, someone. Uh, outside of your organization so when i say organization outside of your account right say and in that case uh, you have a trusting account and you have a trusted account right so uh, you're trusting this user uh, to access your uh, this thing right so in that case you create im rules such that your uh, trusting account can access your trusted account mm -hmm. going to next one is role for identity provider Again, uh, so when I say identity provider, uh, you might have observed uh, some of the organizations use uh, OAuth or uh, Microsoft Active Directory or Google or Facebook identity uh, to provide access, right? So you don't uh, go through console to log into your AWS, but use, uh, let's say, Microsoft uh, identity provider or Google identity provider or uh, any other third party uh, provider uh, to able to access uh, the AWS. That is where uh, identity roles for identity provider comes into picture. Using this, you can uh, provide, uh, you can have user users access your uh, AWS uh, using the third party identity provider. So these are four kinds of roles, and I'll try to link all the uh, uh, resources that I've taken from and so that you can uh, do more in depth read, read. So AWS documentation is full of uh, stuff, right? You can literally uh, uh, read it, and it by it will take like. Uh, 10 to 12 hours also uh, that's uh, amount of information AWS uh, documentation provides and it's a pretty good resource let's talk about who can use your uh, IAM rules right so all the users in my account can use a IAM role that's true right so I want to assume some role I'll do, I'll do it and I am using the different AWS account can use as I said cross account and any web service that you are providing, let's say AEC2, uh, Lambda, they can use the IAM roles or any external user authenticated by, by the identity provider. So as I said, right, so there is this uh, SAML 2.0 or OpenID uh, Connect standards that uh, helps, uh, enables third party identity providers uh, to authenticate users. So these also can use uh, my IAM roles. So now let's look at a small demonstration on uh, AWS IAM roles, right? So again, I'm in my IAM console and I can find roles under uh, the access management. If I hit on the roles, I can see all the roles that I have already been created. And th some of these are all, uh, all these roles are uh, AWS uh, generated service link roles. And this is some role that I created for a basic uh, app that I was doing, right? So let's go ahead and create a new role as we uh, discussed in our demo right so it, these roles there are multiple kinds of roles right so for you can all create roles for providing third party access to uh, to you know create a cross account uh, abilities of access abilities and all so i'll be creating a basic aws role and uh, let's say i uh, this i'll you I'll, I'll need this uh you not know, to be you no know, able to allow uh, ec2 instance or to call all the other uh, AWS services on its behalf, right? So uh, I can again uh, cherry pick some services like uh, let's say DynamoDB, right? So I want uh, to see this, right? So let's say this is the use case that I'm looking for, right? So I can choose that, right? So if not. I can go basically go for the uh, more uh, basic ones like EC2 and Lambda. Most probably uh, EC2 and Lambda are uh, most used uh, use cases, but any other uh, AWS service that you might have, right? So you can basically search for it and you see the use cases and create your uh, 
रोल फॉर दैट सो आई विल क्रिएट अ बेसिक ए सी टू वाला यूज केस रोल एंड आई कैन बेसिकली अटैच सम परमिशन आई विल से डायनामो टी बी फुल एक्सेस राइट सो I am giving a role such that EC2 uh, an EC2 service can have an access to DynamoDB full access. Right. So when I say hit that, you can see that you no, know, we are uh, welcomed with the policy uh, generator. So this is a policy policy that is uh, uh, being generated upon uh, the uh, instructions that we given through our GUI. Right. So I will say I will give it the role as a scalar. I'll say easy to um, Dynamo DB Scalar Demo Role, and if I want, I can go ahead and do some tinkering with this. I can add permissions and all, but this looks good for me. And it's an AWS managed policy. I can also add uh, user managed policies. Right. So let me create the role. and that role is created right so this is one way to create a role and also uh, when you are try performing uh, uh, creating resources through console right so you might require uh, to create roles so aws automatically does creation for for, for you uh, with the basic permissions as well so there is not an explicit need uh, all the time for you to come here and create roles but rules can be created while they are actually required so most of the services that you are trying to create uh, aws prompts you uh, to you know, create a basic role with uh, attached with that right so this is how you create a role so again you can go ahead and you know uh, play around with these so i want if i want to create an uh, role for a cross account access i can create another account i can put their uh, account id here and uh, go ahead with the flow again okay. next next so that's how we can do that and and yeah this is all about uh, aws iam roles uh, let's continue learning and we'll see you uh, in the next demo Uh, moving on, uh, let's also understand what exactly are IAM policies, right? So I've been talking about policies, uh, so for a while, uh, while we are discussing IAM, what exactly are policies, right? So policies are uh, basically you have your identities, right? So when I say identities, users, groups, uh, roles, etc., and these need some accesses to be attached to them, right? So how do you attach accesses to them using your IAM policies? So what exactly are the policies, and it's a basically an object in aws so when associated with identity uh, it is used to define the permissions and if i have to speak uh, plainly it's a text file more of a json to be precise and it's a, a formatted file it is uh, the it has a specific format and by using that format you can add and do some granulated uh, way of uh, giving permissions uh, to your uh, identities right so when it's identities that could be anything and one thing to remember is i when 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 i use iam policies right it doesn't change uh, that whatever uh, method that i'm i'm uh, using uh, to do the permission so when i say this uh, method of method that i use right so whether i'm using it through console or uh, through uh, aws cli or uh, using some apis iam policies uh, their uh, permissions and their actions doesn't change right so if an aws policy uh, gives me uh, grant me access to some aws bucket and i can perform a read write delete on it right so i uh, it doesn't matter if i'm uh, using it through console or uh, programmatically i can and i will be uh, given all these permissions right so that's uh, one important thing to understand here let's look at look at this uh, policy document so as i said it's a formatted uh, document and if you look uh, this is a sample structure right so it's a json document and the first key value would be a version and 2012 uh, 1017 is the latest version 
so when i say version it doesn't mean that uh, the day it was created but uh, the format itself the uh, version of the format itself right so followed by you will have a bunch of statements right so you have your top level element and you have statements statement is basically an array uh, array of statements so if i uh, zoom into that so each statement will have an sid uh, its effect uh, principal action resource conditional block right so these are uh, the general uh, Uh, element that statement has and there are cases where uh, all of them are necessary and also the cases where all of them are not necessary right so you'll, you'll see at least a couple of them uh, required all the way right so let's see what they are as i said so version uh, is the, the version of the policy language so the way they will write the policy uh, the format uh, it's it's the version of that and statement is the uh, main policy element and uh, as i said so it has a sid a sid is a <coughs> it's a, it's an optional uh, basically if you're having multiple statements uh, each of them can have id right so effect would be uh, what is the effect that we're trying to uh, imply there right so it could be allow or deny and allow is straightforward allows uh, something based on our action and resource and delete deny is do that does the deny right so and also uh, next thing is uh, principal right as again principal can be optional and but it it is required in uh, some of uh, the policies that that we write right so so this is where you uh, indicate uh, whether you are uh, mentioning user role or you know what identity that you are using uh, to allow or deny access right so that is the principle right so principle basically implies uh, to you know who is this intended for right and action again uh, this can be uh, differ from a uh, uh, service to service so if i am trying uh, uh, to give a policy on s3 resource uh, the actions can be view bucket uh, rename bucket uh, bunch of stuff i think there's a there are close to some 20 or 30 uh, actions uh, uh that are associated with that so you can uh, give a list of actions and you can also give a uh uh star right so that that includes uh, everything right so it's a uh, cards right so and the last thing is uh, condition so again this is optional but uh, there are certain uh, certain circumstances where uh, there are conditions that needs to be given right so this is the policy document and honestly uh there is no need for us to uh, you know remember this or anything right so in most of the cases you would be either copying paste copy and pasting uh, a policy document uh, from the requirement uh, itself or you can use policy generators uh, you have policy generators that will to make sure that you're uh, not making mistakes right so okay um let's move on to aws iam policy types that we have we have two types of policies uh, managed and uh, inline policies so coming to managed policies uh, these are two types right so aws managed and customer managed let's understand it uh, by one by one so when i say aws managed policies these are policies that are already created by aws right so it comes with your account by default and they get added uh, uh, based on the requirements and all and these are created by aws managed by them and uh, they are a standalone uh, policies uh, that have certain access let's uh, something like a, a aws dynamo db full access right so this is a policy that is uh, created by aws itself right so there we also have a customer managed policies again these are also uh, similar uh, uh, policies they are standalone these are created by customer right so the only difference between managed policies and inline policies is that uh, managed policies are can be uh, are stand alone and can be assigned to anyone whereas inline policies are a special kind of policies so inline policies or policies that are uh, created and attached to us with a certain identity right so not everyone can assume a policy right so if you don't want a certain person to have a uh, assume a policy you create a inline policy and you attach it with your identity while creating it while creating the identity itself 
right so that's the difference between uh, aws and managed policy managed policies are assumable inline policies are not assumable so with this many types of policies there is always a, a scope for conflicts right so how does aws handle them so when i say conflict when i say conflict uh, let's say you have a user has a couple of uh, different policies attached with him and one policy grants him access uh, grants him access to a certain resource and another policy uh, does a uh, deny on that right so how does uh, it take care of that so does it does it have some hierarchy or, or does it look into a, a alphabetical order and to you no know, figure out uh, how to solve this conflicts right so the conflicts in aws are handled pretty simply and they are straightforward right so see there are possibilities of uh, if you have a single deny then you are denied of everything right it doesn't matter how many allows you have right so you will be denied access right so and by default you are denied of all the access right so accesses have to be given explicitly so until and unless you have an explicit allow for a, a resource and there are no uh, policies that are uh, denying that you won't be able to access a resource it's a complex result uh, let's look at a demo of how we can create uh, policies all right so let's look at a demo for uh, creating aws policies again i can find it under access management i can hit on policy and first thing uh, you try to uh, you know, go through all the uh, policies that are already created by you and most of them are aws managed and there are some uh, which are customer package which i had to create for some of the uses that i did again these are not explicitly created these are basically created on the runtime uh, with some basic permissions right so i can go ahead and click on create policy this is where i will be treated with a uh, create policy editor and there are two types of ways you no know, with, with which you can create a json you can uh, uh, no uh, 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 write your uh, json statement as we uh, previously learned in our slides or uh, do a better way of using a visual editor right so i prefer uh, using a visual editor uh, because uh, it's i feel it's a less prone to human error right so let's write a policy based upon s3 right so i say s3 and all the actions that it can perform is uh, i want only read to be performed okay so that is that and uh i can i can basically give uh, read access to all the resources or i can limit some resources to say only any bucket right so give it to any bucket or i can you no know, go ahead and say give it give it to in any object right so that's how granular you can go so i'll select a specific and buckets i'll give any so and if are there any request conditions that i want right so i can say mfa has to be enabled so if the user that is accessing is i am user so his mfa should be required or i can have a ip range or i can give a header block right so this is a uh, very useful let's say if you want to uh, give access to a certain s3 bucket to uh, people in your organization right so people uh, in your corporate uh, wifi or in your corporate vpn right so you can give their ip array ip range or a cider block range here so only people in that ip range can access right so these are some uh, nitty gritties uh, for, for me uh, basic thing does the job so i can i want Uh, read actions all the read actions like get object and again i can fine grain this instead of giving all the get access i if i want to give only uh, s3 bucket logging i can do that right so but for me uh, read access and everything looks good so i'll give go tags tags are basically used to know uh, basically associate the resources but that's not required here i'll give it even name uh, so s3 read uh, any resource any not any resource right so any uh, i think any bucket scale right 
can read any uh, okay and looks good to me and i can create this policy right and you can see that you know it is uh, given under here so it's a customer managed policy right so that's how you can create uh, aws policies so we can look at uh, some sample easy to access policy to understand more about it right so if i look here i can look under uh, policy summary and it has access to cloudwatch ec2 ec2 auto scaling elb uh, version 2 elb iam right so and if you wanted uh, to understand what what all these are right so cloudwatch is basically used to write uh, logs or get alerts all these kind of stuff right so we need that so generally you no know, when we are uh, working with ec2 we might be uh, you no know, uh, looking for events or uh, pushing some uh, metrics to cloudwatch all those kind of stuff so that's why we might require full access to that again obviously easy to uh, full access is needed auto scaling right so if i want my uh, uh, no project or uh, the deployment that i did so has to auto scale so auto scaling full access again load balancing full access and iam full access so these are highly coupled resources so when when uh, people are trying to access ec3 they tend to uh, be needing these all in a bunch so that's how uh, aws thought about it and put all uh, the closely knit services into aws ec2 full access right so if i look at the json it it, it will be more clear right so we have a bunch of statements allowing uh, all the actions on ec2 allowing all the actions on uh, load balancing allowing all allowing all so that's how uh, we do it right so it's an uh, service linked role right so you can you can go ahead and uh, look at all the different services and how uh, uh, the resources and actions are uh, set up there are so many of them i think there are some close to 400 something uh, yeah i think close to 500 uh, we have uh, policies that we have oops sorry it's 950 953 right so yeah that's it about uh, aws policy uh, that's a small demo and we'll see you in my um, next demos now uh, we are into final part of our uh, session that is understanding security best practices in iam these are security practices that are uh, suggested by aws itself and these are very very important right so i see uh, on twitter and linkedin people posting that uh, Uh, their accounts got leaked or uh, somebody took the credential and they are having a bigger bigger bill that they need to pay and they write to aws support you know, to get it reimbursed and so on uh, so it's better uh, safe than sorry so one thing that you need to do is always lock your root access right so never use your root account no the root account is only to create your initial account right so that's it so you you never have to uh, you no know, take care of your root account for anything right so until something like a billing or something happens never use your root account second thing always use roles to delegate permissions so create roles for uh, each of them so never give them uh, more than what they ask for grant least privilege right so always do just enough so that uh, the certain use case can be completed not only here uh, this will be uh, uh, this you will hear about this about this multiple places so always do just enough so that uh, you know the particular requirement is satisfied right so it, at least in terms of uh, permissions and all never assume that you no know, he might require something in the future right so let them come back uh, if they need a uh, newer access but always uh, grant least privileges right so when i say that so if somebody wants uh, to access s3 bucket and all they do is download a bunch of images from your bucket give them only uh, a view access right so there is no reason for the, for you to give s3 full access for them right so that's what uh, grant leave least privilege means right so give them just enough such that they can uh, satisfy their uh, use case and uh, always uh, you know start using aws managed policies right so create your policies as you go you will find that uh, the certain kinds of work that you do you require certain policies that you observe you are using multiple times right so create managed policies for that right 
always use uh, customer managed policies in, instead of inline policies inline policies are special kind of policies and uh, they are required uh, if you are sure that you no know, this is a one of a kind and uh, it shouldn't be assumed by any other role right so that is when you use inline policies but always try to go to customer managed policies over inline policies right so customer managed policies first and uh, only when there is a, a certain use case for which inline use uh, uh, created go for inline policies again customer policies managed policies greater than inline policies and use access level to review iam permissions right so in iam you have uh, the dashboard to see uh, no who used what right so periodically uh, go and review that and uh, if somebody is not using a certain resource for over a period ask them if they actually need it and try to remove that so uh, always review your permissions and again i can't uh, stress this out but always use a strong uh, password policy for your users make sure they are uh, doing a, a strong password and uh, always enable a multi factor authentication uh, so you can have uh, your third party apps uh, integrated into your iam accounts and also root account so it's a must uh, to uh, enable a multi factor authentication right so it is pretty important because see uh, in a way uh, your aws account is much more important uh, than your uh, twitter for example right because uh, you might be having your entire business run through your aws account right so it's okay if twitter get compromised but it's not the same with uh, uh aws right by the way i'm not saying that you no know, your twitter has to be leaked but so if there's a case where you no know, if i have to lose my aws access or twitter access i would choose twitter access because you could be doing much more important uh, things on your uh, aws account right so that's why always use multi factor authentication and uh, always use roles for the applications uh, that are non ec2 instances this is a very important rule and i i believe i need to uh, elaborate this right so what do i mean by use rules for applications right so let's say uh, you have a ec2 instance running and ec2 if if anybody doesn't know is basically a a, a server right so it's a you can uh, spin up uh, different kinds of uh, images uh, on using it is to be basically servers that you run on demand and they pay for what you use let's assume that these are some linux instances that you are running and you are running your website on aws ec2 right so and let's say you have a use case or api that runs on ec2 which needs access to let's say dynamo db or s3 right so there are two ways you can do it right so you can take your uh, access keys and access uh, uh, keys and passwords and put it on your ec2 uh, and um, get, you know make your ec2 access uh, them for using that keys right that that's one approach or the better approach or the approach that you should follow is use roles right so it is always recommended uh, not to hard code your access keys or uh, any sort of credentials onto your ec2 instances just because your ec2 instance need to access that so for that cases you use roles right so we are talked about service linked roles and service roles right so you basically give your ec2 instance uh, make it assume a role where it has access uh, to s3 or a dynamo db right so that is where uh, this uh, practice comes in use roles for applications that run on ec2 instances and again this is pretty straightforward uh, if you haven't figured it out never share your access keys rotate your credentials regularly and remove unnecessary credentials uh, use policy conditions for extra safety monitoring activity in your aws account these are all pretty straightforward and the, these are something that you should do it even if somebody is not telling you, know, you you should you shouldn't be told by someone not to share your access keys right so uh, these are some of the security practices uh, that are specified specific to adelbs iam uh, that aws uh, recommends so this is what uh, have been planned for this video so i hope uh, this video was helpful uh, we tried to cover uh, all the important uh, bases of iam and now uh, it's your responsibility to uh, go ahead uh, and open your aws account so uh, be careful with your bills and try out uh, these things and you can explore much more uh, deeper into it so there's always so much to learn right so we can't uh, always put entire information into a single video uh things like uh, policies you can read more about policies resource based policies 
right so i hope uh, this video was helpful and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching